Okay, so we are going to talk about a geometric series, and series indicates, you know, a sum. So this is the general idea of a geometric series. Um, the summation from 0 to infinity, a being the coefficient, r is your common ratio to the n. So we can represent a geometric series in this way. Um, so an example of that could look like, let's say something like this, 2 times... Um, Let's just say 1 half to the n. So if I were to do, let's just say write out the first few terms of this series, the first term would start at 0, plug in 0, 1 half to the 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus the second term would go to n is equal to, to 1, 1 half to the 1 is 1 half times 2 is 1, third term would be when n is equal to 2, 1 half to the second is 1 fourth. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. Um, we'll do one more. So we started at n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, n is 3. 1 half to the third is 1 eighth times 2 is 1 fourth, blah, blah, blah. So you can see um, that from one term to the next, you know, we're dividing by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half which is one of the patterns, it's the pattern of a, a geometric sequence. You know, you're multiplying each term by the same number, so you have a common ratio, so that's what r is. And then we're starting at um, 2. Um, all right, so if we have a geometric series, then we want to talk about how it converges or diverges, or whether it does converge or diverge. And um, it diverges, of course, um, if, so we, we want to base it on the common ratio what's here. In this case, the common ratio is 1 half. If the common ratio is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. It just keeps growing, 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 or shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. In this case, you know, r, the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1. It's a fraction between 0 and 1. And because, you know, it follows that, that means that this series converges. So I already know based on the common ratio here that this series converges. Um, and, you know, if it's geometric, we can actually determine where it converges to. So what would this sum approach? What would it uh, converge to? What would this total sum to infinity become if I continue? And it, it would become this, a over 1 minus r. So in this case, let's just say my a which is 2, right? This is my a over 1 minus r. 1 minus r, my common ratio, which is 1 half. I can actually determine the value that this series, this sum, would become over time. 2 over 1 minus 1 half. 2 divided by 1 half, which is 2 times 2 or 4. So this, this series, this particular example of a geometric series, would converge... 2, 4. Um, so we base it on the common ratio r. So you have to be able to identify whether or not it's a geometric series. Um, we talk about infinite series and there's some basic properties, you know, that technically are kind of common sense. Like I'll do an example really quick of each one, but so n is 1 to infinity. So the first one just says if I have this, you know, infinite series, c is a constant, a n is, um, a n is the formula involved with that series. I'll make it really easy. Let's just say 2 n. Um, <clears throat> and A is the sum, the convergence of that series. It's basically like saying, you know, you could take out the 2, bring the constant to the front. Um, sorry, that's an end. Take out the 2, bring the constant to the front, um, and deal with this portion of it. And let's say that this converges to a value they call a here, then this is equal to 2a, whatever a might be. So, you know, you could take out the constant and bring it in front and then just deal with this part here. That's what the first property states. And that's, you know, some basic kind of stuff. Um, this one, I'll just make it easy, 2 plus uh, n. Um, all this is saying, and number three follows the same idea as number two, that basically I can separate this. 
into, you know, the summation from 1 to, to infinity of 2 plus the summation from 1 to infinity of n. And I only do this kind of stuff if it makes it easier to analyze each series uh, separately. So that's what these properties of infinite series are. And again, basic stuff. Um, just, you know, useful if it is easier to deal with them separately rather than together. Um, uh, another test for convergence or divergence, this is the nth term test for divergence. This states that when a series converges, the limit of its nth term must be zero. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a n is zero if a series converges. Now, um, this says if this is true, then this is true. It doesn't say that if this is true, then this is true. But majority of the time, if this is true, then this is true. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a n is equal to zero, then the series converges. But there are specific cases where that is not true. So um, this is kind of one direction. Think of it like that, um, unless you memorize all those different special cases where it doesn't work in the opposite direction. Uh, so let's look at some examples really quick. Um, so first one, we want to determine whether the series converges or whether it diverges. And, you know, if we could find the sum, we'll find it. But if not, that's okay. It just depends on the situation. So does the series converge or does it diverge? So in the first case, um, the summation from zero to infinity of this. Um, hopefully you guys recognize this one as a geometric series. It follows that geometric form where a would be the coefficient here. a in this case is one and r, the common ratio here, that value being raised to the nth power is negative 0.6. So um, to determine if this is ge uh, if this geometric series converges or diverges, I'm going to look at r. And in this case, the absolute value of r is positive 0.6, which is between um, 0 and 1. So therefore, the series converges. And I can actually determine what it converges to, because if it's an infinite geometric series that converges, then the sum of the infinite series would be a, in this case 1, over 1 minus the common ratio minus negative 0 0.6, um, or 1 over 1 plus 0 0.6. So I'm going to convert this into fraction form. So 1 plus, this is 6 tenths, or 3 fifths. I'm kind of running into the next thing, but um, I'll erase this after. So 1 divided by 5 fifths plus 3 fifths, 1 divided by 8 fifths, which equals 5 eighths. So this would be the sum of this, you know, geometric series because it converges. And we can determine that because it's geometric. Um, in, in this situation, you know, I might use one of those properties, you know, to analyze each of these separately. So let's, you know, let's just say this is the same thing, correct? Um, and, and with time, over time, you guys will be able to determine um, or how to write this, especially after I show you this example, that this is the same thing as the summation from 0 to infinity of 1 half, the quantity to the nth power, right? 1 to the nth is 1, over 2 to the nth is the same thing as this, minus the summation, 0 to infinity of 1 over 3 to the nth. This is also um, a geometric case, right? This is the same thing as what I have here. So I am able to write both of these series in geometric form. So I have two geometric series. So, I mean, if I analyze each of them separately, the first one, the a coefficient in front of the common ratio is 1, and the common ratio is 1 half. So based on the common ratio being between 0 and 1, or the absolute value of it be, uh, being between 0 and 1, we can say that this converges. This one here, a is also 1, and the common ratio is 1 third. So based on the common ratio, again, we can say that this one 
converges. So because both of them converge separately, then I can say that this whole thing together also converges. Now, if one of these diverge, then obviously the whole thing would have to diverge because it represents, you know, the sum or the difference of the two. So these both have to converge in order for this to converge if I'm separating it and looking at them in two different cases. Uh, okay. Um, let's look at this next example. I'm running out of space. I'll move this over here. And if you look at um, this situation here, obviously it's not geometric in form, right? It doesn't look like either of these, and I can't really rewrite it in that in that sense. So there are different methods that we can use to determine if this converges or diverges. But because we were talking about this nth term test for divergence. Um, then we can use that to determine if these converge or diverge. So I want to be able to find the limit as n approaches infinity of, you know, the nth term. So for this one, I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. This is an n, if you can't tell, <laughs> of n plus 10 over 10n plus 1, which if you guys remember, um, to find this, limit. If I were to plug in infinity, I would get infinity over infinity, which means I can L-hop it, L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top, which is 1, derivative of the bottom, which is 10, and say this is equal to 1 tenth. Um, notice uh, that this is not equal to 0. This is equal to a number, and therefore I will say that this diverges. So if I'm using this uh, nth term test, the next theorem states that when a series converges, the limit of its nth term must be zero. If it's not zero, then automatically I can say it diverges. Um, if it is equal to zero, then you know I can assume that it converges, but again, there are special cases where it does not. So just be careful with that. If I look at this one, let's do this one really quickly. Same thing, I can't rewrite it in geometric form. So I'm gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of this n over the natural log of n. And if I plug in infinity now, I get infinity over infinity, which means again, I could use L'Hopital's rule. So um, I'm not taking the limit yet. So limit as n approaches infinity of the derivative of n, which is one, over the derivative of the natural log of n, which is one over n which is equal to 1 divided by 1 over n, which is equal to n. So the limit as n approaches infinity of n and this is equal to infinity. So again, this is not equal to um, not equal to 0, so we can say that this series also uh, diverges. Okay, so um, here is another example, a special example for the series, you know, the summation from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, um, whatever. We want to determine if this is a conversion or diversion series. Um, now, if you look at it, it doesn't look geometric in form because uh, I can't rewrite it as, you know, something to the nth power, in other words. So I'm going to use the other test. Um, let's determine the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. Now when I plug in infinity here, I get 0. Now, um, when the limit of the nth term is equal to 0, we want to assume that the series converges, right? But I did tell you that there are special types of series where that is not always true. If the limit as n approaches infinity of that series is equal to zero, that doesn't necessarily mean that the series converges for some special cases. So um, based on this, um, I know that it may or may not converge, um, and more than likely it might, but this is a special type of se uh, series 
that does special things. I'm actually going to, you'll see it in, in a second, this type of series. So I can't assume that this converges. So we're just going to say that we cannot assume, cannot assume this series converges. Okay, so again, what you're looking for is if the series is a geometric in form, you can identify the common ratio and based on that common ratio, see if it converges or diverges, right? If that common ratio is between zero and one, the series converges. If it's greater than one, it diverges. Um, this other test here states that, you know, if a series converges, then the limit of that nth term has to be zero. So if this limit is not zero, then it automatically diverges. If the limit is zero, more than likely it converges, but we're not going to say that it does because we have to determine, you know, some of these special cases that actually might diverge even though the limit is equal to zero.